copies of this report. I have a few copies here. Uh, if you do a Google search on computational technology for effective healthcare, you will eventually come to a, um, uh, a free PDF of this report. Uh, so I apologize for not having more of these. We'll put that on here. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we started out with the Institute of Medicine's vision uh, for information, uh, so for healthcare. Uh, which is a healthcare system that is safe, effective, patient-centered, timely, efficient, and, and, and equitable. Uh, and and uh, we, we saw this as the, uh, uh, as the vision that we were trying to achieve with, uh, with, with information technology um, uh, in healthcare. Uh, and while, when we visited these, what we called these best-of-breed institutions, um, we were looking to, to them to learn uh, what did and didn't work. And so what we came out of this was they, they, there were many accomplishments in, this, in, in these institutions that should be praised, definitely praiseworthy and so on, uh, many individual successes. But what we learned, I, I think, demonstrated the limitations of today's uh, uh, healthcare information technology. And I think that we concluded that the uh, kinds of information technology that characterize most of these points, not all of them, but most of them, um, will do little to help realize the uh, island vision of uh, quality health care in the uh, 21st century. So for example, what were the sorts of issues? Uh, the, the clinical IT systems that we saw were monolithic and complex. That is, if you wanted to change something here, you'd have to change something over here, and you'd have to change something over there. And, and, and they, were, they were very tightly integrated. Um, and uh, it made these dependencies, made improvements in practice very difficult to, to, to implement, um, where you could argue that information technology rapid improvement possible. Um, they didn't do that. Even within an institution, the implementation of systems was uh, was slow. Uh, in some places, it took decades. I mean, think about that term, decades, in, in the context of information technology. That's a long time. Um, there were some places that we saw projects that were being implemented over a period of more than 10 years. Um, uh, interoperability between systems was often slow. Awkward information exchange with other systems was, was rare. Um, so you also found that the uh, applications on these systems were basically automating paper-based processes, paper-based uh, care processes, um, often used to document and to defend against potential lawsuits, not to improve healthcare. So, for example, what you would see is a for one of the striking facts was seeing nurses. Uh, spend about half their time entering data uh, into the hospital information system, uh, and you ask them, do you ever read this data, read what you're entering? They say no. So why do you do it? And the answer is, in order to comply with regulations, in order to defend against lawsuits. Um, nurses account for a half of the personnel budget in many of these places. So a quarter of the, pers of the personnel budget is being spent on entering data that they said, the providers say, don't that's not a systematic number, and, and, and you know, don't, don't quote me on it. It's always like this, um, but that's what, that's what we saw at, at, at several institutions. Um, so, in short, uh, you know, what we saw was that, that sometimes using these applications um, increased the chances of error, uh, increased rather than decreased workload, uh, and compounded the frustrations of doing required tasks. So, in short, the, the, the technology was designed to, to automate existing practice rather than to help clinicians improve and change their own practices. Um, what should be done in, in, in the future? Well, we, we thought that the, in the, this report explicitly recommends um, embracing uh, explicitly measurable uh, healthcare quality improvement as the rationale for, for healthcare uh, information technology adoption. We thought that clinicians would just run like crazy to application to healthcare applications that make their that help them do their jobs more effectively, more efficiently. Um, but that they understandably and for good reason resist technology that increases the burdens on them uh, and, and uh, uh, provides the benefits to the insurers and the administrators rather than to the clinicians. Um, uh, so we thought that paying clinicians to use information technology uh, was sort of an implicit acknowledgement that the technology you're paying them to use isn't really helping them uh, do their jobs better. Uh, and it could increase the difficulty, including of uh, upgrading technologies later on. 
Uh, so what we thought uh, was that um, uh, better health care outcomes in general call for comprehensive data on, uh, uh, on, on patient conditions and, and treatments and cognitive support, uh, helping people, helping providers make, uh, make better decisions. Uh, and we thought that healthcare information technology should emphasize efforts in that area, should emphasize more uh, technology that would, for example, provide data synthesis, uh, help you help patients, help a physician, uh, for example, understand the, uh, uh, the status of all of his patients. Um, so, for example, you might have a dashboard that they comes up on the on a computer screen indicating uh, the status of 300 patients, and there are, uh, for example, uh, the people who need attention will be in red, and they'll be, and so the goal is to make less of that uh, less of that screen uh, red, uh, providing ways of giving you good feedback, and so it gives you so, something like this would give the, the clinician a, uh, a prompt feedback about where attention is needed. Um, you could also imagine having uh, uh, data integration, data and information integration in ways that would make it easier uh, for the clinician to integrate healthcare information. Today, they get information in a set of charts, uh, and they have to integrate through the mental integration themselves. There should be better ways of uh, putting this uh, information into easily visualizable forms to free the clinician from spending all that mental effort in making these models and spending it more on, on uh, questions like uh, such as uh, diagnosis. Uh, data mining, uh, the use of, of knowledge discovery to analyze uh, unknown relationships. Uh, so you could imagine, for example, getting, uh, getting guidelines, automated guidelines that a, that a physician could integrate automatically into a care plan for uh, his or her uh, patients, um, not blindly, but the physician would say, I, this person is eligible for this plan. The, that guidelines would automatically download, and the chart would met, would update. Uh, so, what the significance of this is that it, it enables a, a physician to systematically translate research into uh, uh, into practice. Um, so, we we thought that that uh, we needed a fresh the nation needed a fresh approach to acquiring uh, uh, health IT that serves clinicians and patients uh, and the more uh, than uh, the current IT uh, does, does now. Uh, what should the administration do? What we talked about was that the administration uh, requiring um, uh, what we would call a site-based plan uh, for how the technology would be used to enhance and improve clinical performance. This is the, the, the idea that you want these decisions on how to measure performance and it's only done locally. Um, uh, the, the plans would describe things like how the workflows would be changed, uh, how information collected would be used to improve clinical performance, um, the metrics through which performance would be addressed, um, and how the, the deployment might accommodate changes in uh, ongoing change in best practice. Notice that all of these things have to do with the outcome, not the input that you put into it, not the technology uh, per se. Um, in talking about uh, healthcare uh, information technology, we thought that it should be broadly broadly construed, not just to include um, computer hardware, uh, but stuff that would also be in, aimed at, at re-engineering care workflows and processes for greater effectiveness and efficiency. For example, sometimes you could imagine that a change in workflow could simplify your tasks in such a way that uh, you didn't need the technology at all, or you needed it less. One example would be that, that healthcare information technology is often used to pass information from provider to provider. This is a good thing. You want it to be well, what if you could cut out that step? What if you, that, if you didn't have to hand off information? And, and for example, you could have uh, one person, you know, one care provider taking care of a smaller number of patients uh, and, and uh, thereby minimizing the need for, uh, for, for these handovers. Um, and uh, the last uh, recommendation that, that we made here was that, that the, uh, a, the few percent of the uh, uh, healthcare package on uh, uh, the healthcare package should include research on uh, uh, organizational learning or the systems level understanding about the design of healthcare systems and processes. The, I, this is not a technology per se comment. It's a you know, how do you organize the, the, the care system to provide uh, the best kind of care rather than focusing just on the technology. Um, human 
computer interaction in a clinical context. We saw this as being a very important thing. So fruits just uh, I can't resist this this particular story. We saw one institution uh, where an error, we saw an error being made and was caught immediately, but you can imagine how it would happen. We talked about the physician order entry, and the physician was ordering medication. And so what happens, what medication do you want? You type the first letter of it, and you get type in A, you get all the medications with the, you know, starting with A. And then you mouse over to it and you click the, you click the medication you want. Well, I don't know about you, but I've often clicked the wrong thing in a drop down list. Okay. So medication for a liver condition comes up when it's really can an anti-cancer medication that you want, right? Just because they're right next to each other alphabetically doesn't mean they have anything to do with each other clinically. But it, so we wind up, you know, ordering a, a, a lung medication for a cancer problem or something like that. Um, that's a real problem. And then somebody says, No, 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 you didn't, you didn't, you didn't really mean to do that. But the system could easily tell you, at least in principle, could say, Are you? Do you really mean to do this? Thing? And, and ask you the question, look at the medical record, why are you treating, giving this person a uh, drug for a condition that he doesn't have? And you want to do that, that's okay, but that you could, you could at least ask the question. So there are many human computer interaction principles that uh, uh, should be respected and uh, often aren't in, in, in practice. So we, we began this project focused on long-term research opportunities, and, and we, we did find lots of them. But we also found ways of applying today's knowledge uh, differently. And we thought that uh, the, the goal should be to emphasize clinical improvements rather than the technology uh, per se. And so that was, that was the lesson of this report.